Hambini fans and welcome. Today is the day when I reveal my new bike frame. But before then, we need the usual amount of foray play to pass the time. <laughs> Stuff about, but I'm not going to. Instead, we'll forget the foray play and let's reveal the bike. It is a Look KG 386 carbon monoblock circa 2003. Uh, basically, it is the lick, so it is off the end of the chart, uh, but it does have a few little issues that um, have come with it. Uh, and the main reason, the biggest issue, was I picked this up for the princely sum of 50 English pounds, 50 quid, with the aim of demonstrating to the dentists, the Ronald Coobers of the world, you know, the ones with small penises and low sperm counts who spend vast amounts of money on bicycling paraphernalia to make themselves go fast and still end up in the Sunday League. So I'm going to make this thing the lick cur, uh, basically to make it as fast, if not faster, than this which is my Cervelo S5 complete with its famous Canadian manufacturing tolerances via some place in China where it's just likely to creak. So let's go through, oh no, before that, let's do a variation of my intro, which is, hi guys, my name's Ronnie and welcome to the workshop. I'm now going to bore you senseless for the next five minutes while I do sweeping shots of the back of the bike and the front of the bike. Fuck that. This is the Hambeen channel. We actually talk about technical stuff. Right, this is the look frame. Uh, circa 2003, let's start at this end and all the good points. So we have aluminium dropouts. For those of you who think carbon is better, that's bullshit, aluminium all the way. And then we have this, which is the HSE carbon fork. If you're not familiar with, uh, with aerodynamics, then, um, what you're trying to do is aim for something that is uh, verging on a teardrop type shape. This is probably the most aerodynamic fork of its generation. Um, so that, that's quite good. Bike comes with, uh, well, it was designed for cable, so it's got cable stops either end. Uh, the next thing is this, which is the threaded bottom bracket. So it's an ISO threaded bottom bracket. And then as we go a bit further back towards the rear, we can see more aluminium dropouts. Uh, in this case, the aluminium dropouts are adjustable. So this gap here, or the scallop as I like to call it, is um, we can move the tire in and out. It's quite good for aerodynamics. Overall, this frame has a few cosmetic defects. So there's uh, a few scratches and things all over the place, uh, but it has a few mechanical problems, which are a bit more difficult to, uh, well, perhaps overcome. The first of these mechanical defects or mechanical issues that we might have to overcome is the age old standard stuck seat post. Now this is carbon bodied, but I believe there's an aluminium sleeve in here to hold that in. Uh, I've tried undoing the clamp and it's not having it. So, so we need to fix that. There's a bit of flaking lacquer here, but uh, I'm not really too worried about that. And I think this bit's lost a cover, the brake bit has lost a cover, uh, but again, not too concerned about that either. The more concern is this uh, for the front mech, the the carbon uh, around where the um, uh, cable comes through is, is worn slightly and it's um, seen better days. Now in the days of single speed, that might be something that I'm going to go down to a one by 12 or one by 11. And um, the other thing is Oh no, here. So we've had a bit of a rub. It's fairly superficial. It's only through the paint, um, but that's probably caused by the adjustable dropout that's done that. Now the biggest concern is this, which is the fork. Now uh, the bearings inside the headset are a bit gritty, but we can change them. But the fork is problematic because it looks like it's been cut too short. If I get the tape measure out and then measure, um, how much we've got we've only got 25 mil poking out now forks tend to be oh sorry the the 
um, stems tend to be 35 or 40 mil so there's a good 10 or 15 mil of problem area there which we're gonna have to sort out um, I'll find a way of sorting that out and my main reason for buying this well there's a few reasons but firstly it's, it's a very aerodynamic frame for its age um, and the, the main ultimate reason is because it's French and because I too am French I would thought I would support my fellow French engineers by buying a French made bike. Now some people will say, ah oh, that Hambini's he's lying, he's not French at all. Well, I have a tattoo that says made in France, fabric on France. So therefore I'm French just like my yellow vested colleagues who come out every Sunday to burn uh, sheep by placing tires around their um, heads and uh, you know setting it alight with petrol. But you know joking aside, this I think is made in Tunisia um but it's I've, I've had this check so i've scanned it and it's geometrically very good for uh for well for any type of frame um so yeah so let's let's go so over the next few weeks you're going to see me put this together and make it the fastest thing for 50 quid that you can get um i'm obviously gonna have to buy a few things like a group set handlebars stem and the process through all of that that we go through um if you want the real reason why I bought this, well, I was actually going to the bar, and if you, if you read my Twitter feed, you'll understand what happened. Uh, on Saturdays, I go to the betting shop, and at the betting shop, I go along with 50 quid, and place bets on various football matches to see if I can mm, increase my um, monies. Well, on this particular Saturday, I was walking along the street, and out of the corner out of my eye, uh, I caught a glimpse of a woman with huge bazookas inside the second-hand shop. So for a better look, because my middle-aged eyesight is getting a bit bad, I decided to wander in. And at that point, I saw this. And then I decided to buy it after negotiating with the woman with the big bazookas for a good five or ten minutes. Um, and then she let me have it for 50 quid. So I didn't end up in the betting shop. I ended up buying this. So that's the real reason I ended up with this frame. But we've got what we've got. So let's carry on and see how we get. So once this sequence of videos is finished, you're about to see what you can get with a 15 year old carbon bike and it's not going to be too indifferent to one of these modern bikes that the bike companies will tell you is the fastest thing since sliced bread. In fact I expect this to be probably as fast if not faster than the Cervelo S5 behind me based on some decisions I'm going to make. Uh, you two can make those decisions so uh, please you know check out my other videos uh, hit that like button and uh, tune in next time to see well, probably me get the seat post out or fix the, uh, the, the front fork. Thanks very much and until next time.